Hi everyone, thanks for joining the talk today. So this morning I'm going to discuss the future of light, the impact light-based technologies will have in such areas as communications, healthcare, transportation, and many other aspects of our daily lives. This area of science is called photonics, and in this talk I will try and explain what photonics is, where it's used, and what role it will play in our future. So first, a little bit about me. So my name is Park Morrissey, and I'm a researcher and technology manager at the Tyndall National Institute in Cork in Ireland. And my research area is something called photonic packaging and systems integration, which I'm going to talk about in more detail a little bit later. Over here, you can see like, the inside of our lab where, you're, where we have over 20 people working on our team. The Tyndall National Institute is Ireland's largest research, research centre, and we have over 500 staff and students working out with us on a variety of different R&D projects in areas such as nanotechnology, energy, electronics, and of course, photonics. But what is photonics? Well, photonics is the science and technology of how, how you generate, control, and detect light. So in general, photonics uses a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum that extends from the ultraviolet region into the visible, and then finally into the infrared. This means that some photonic technologies you can actually see with your eye, like the output from a red laser pointer, whereas others, like the infrared signal from a remote control, is totally invisible. Photonics began with the invention of the laser in May 1960 by Theodore Maiman. So his laser, shown here, consisted of a ruby crystal rod placed in the center of a high-powered lamp. When the lamp flashed light, it caused some of the atoms in the ruby to emit light itself. This light, in turn, caused other atoms within the ruby rod to emit even more light. Mirrors at each end of the rod reflected this light back and forth through the rod, greatly amplifying the process, and you end up with an intense beam of light at the output, which is, called, which is the laser beam. And this was a very significant milestone, and since then it's played a huge role in our modern lives. And the International Day of Light is actually celebrated on May 16th every year, which is the anniversary of this achievement. But where is photonics actually used? Well, one of the most important uses for, for photonics is actually in high-speed internet. Lasers are used to send information back and forth through optical fiber, which is photonic technology. This optical fiber is much better at sending information compared to the electrical wires that we would have used 10, 15 years ago for dial-up internet. There are now hundreds of thousands of kilometers of optical fiber all over the world, linking countries and different continents together for high-speed communications. So optical fiber is really the backbone of the internet as we know it. Another example of where photonic technologies are currently used is in your mobile phone. This is actually one area where, where, where photonics is actually used in more places than you might think at first. So if you look at the front of the phone, photonics would actually be used to make the LCD screen and the actual glass. If you turn your phone back over, photonics is used to make the actual LEDs, the flash of your camera, the actual camera sensor for taking photos, and it's heavily involved in actually the design and actually the manufacturing of the lenses used to actually capture the light to take a photo. All these require photonic technologies. As well as this, we're now seeing actual lasers being put into new phones as well. These lasers are actually used to send short bursts of infrared light around the environment to actually image what's around you. This is going to help be very useful for augmented reality applications in the future. So apart from phones and high-speed internet, where else is photonics used? Well, photonics is used in your smartwatch to measure your heart rate as well as do other diagnostics. It's used in healthcare for eye surgery. In the automotive industry, it's used for advanced manufacturing and also for LiDAR for actual self-driving cars. Consumer products, it's used in lighting, cameras, and TV. So photonics is really everywhere around us. What is the future of light and photonics? Well, this is a question that we're currently working on at Tyndall. And the next part of my talk, I'm going to try and describe the future of light and how new light-based research will actually impact our lives. The invention of the integrated circuit, or the IC, has revolutionized the use of electronics in the world around us. An integrated circuit, or IC, brings together a collection of different electronic circuits, including resistors, transistors, capacitor, capacitors, and diodes, to form a single given function. Now, one single integrated circuit can contain thousands to millions of such components, depending on the computing power required. Right now, we're actually starting to see a new type of integrated circuit appear. Instead of integrating electrical components together, it's actually integrating many different optical circuits, circuits together. So now we're actually having light moving around the chip rather than electrical signals. And this technology is called photonic integration. So how does this work? Well, typically you take components that are usually thought of as being discrete or separate. This could be something like a laser that's used to generate light, a transmitter that's used to encode information, so to create those ones and zeros in terms of optical pulses, and the detector that's used to measure or sense the light output. And you put them together onto a common platform. Now, integrating onto a common platform allows you to really miniaturize the full system. So you can take a very large lab-based technology that you can see here at the top left and make it extremely small, so small that you can even fit it on the top of a batch. Now, these optical ICs are commonly called photonic integrated circuits, or PICs for short. 
you haven't seen an example of one such PIC and we actually work on it and it's from our partners Fraunhofer in Germany. So on this PIC, we actually have lasers that can actually be used to create light at 15, 15 nanometers. We have modulators that are used to turn on and off the light to encode information. So in this case, the modulators actually work at about 20 billion times a second to encode information, so extremely fast. We also have detectors that used to measure, sense, and detect the light afterwards to make sure everything is working properly. These photonic integrated circuits um, are extremely small, have lower power consumption, improve reliability, and you can make really complex systems from them. So there's several advantages that are actually really important in terms of photonics from these circuits. These photonic integrated circuits can really help some, solve some of the world's major technological challenges in terms of healthcare, agri-tech, data security, and also internet communications. Communications in particular is actually one area where photonic integration is already being used to cope with the increasing demands for internet bandwidth. The year and year the demand for internet bandwidth is actually increasing worldwide. In recent years, this has been driven by on-demand video, where more and more people than ever are using Netflix and other services for entertainment. On this graph here, we're actually looking at the estimated global internet traffic per month as measured in exabytes. So one exabyte is about 250 million DVDs worth of information. So in 2011, worldwide we're using about 30 exabytes per month of internet capacity. And this has actually been increasing year on year. The trend for more and more internet bandwidth is only likely to continue and it's not likely to slow down anytime soon. So there really is a strong need for faster optical communication systems to keep up with this demand. But the key to current optical communication systems is really the optical transceiver. These transceivers that you can see here actually convert electrical signals to light signals and vice versa. So data is stored in a server in electrical form. These transceivers are used to convert the electrical signal to, a lop, to an optical signal before it's sent via optical fiber to another part of a server in a data center or else to the outside network. Traditional optical transceivers are in high demand because we need more and more of them to keep up the current demand for internet bandwidth, which dries up their price and makes them have very, very low supply. The next generation of optical transceivers are starting to use photonic integration to increase performance. So here we see an example from Intel, where they're actually showing how their latest transceivers actually work. So at the core of these transceivers is a photonic integrated circuit based on the silicon platform that you can see here. Now the electrical signal from a data center or from a server in a data center gets converted to an optical signal by this photonic integrated circuit. Then it can leave the transceiver and go to another transceiver or another data center or another part of the network. And the reserve, the reverse is also true. Light can actually enter this transceiver through an optical fiber, reach the photonic integrated circuit, and the light signal can get very efficiently and quickly converted to an electrical signal where it can interface, interface with the data center. As these transceivers are more energy efficient, they use lower power, so they're better for the environment, and most importantly, allow, allow for much higher bandwidth than are possible with traditional technologies. So what type of photonic integration technologies do we actually work on at Tyndall? Well, we're actively involved in quite a few different areas. We have groups involved in the design and manufacture with our clean room, where we can make optical circuits on different platforms like silicon and iridium phosphate. We have groups involved in testing and packaging, which is where my area, research area is based, and I'll talk more about later. And then we have also groups that are involved in system integration, so how, how we can put these new photonic chips into larger systems and larger networks, like for higher speed internet. So as I said, my research area is called photonic packaging. And in this field, we actually take the optical integrated circuits that are made at Tyndall or all around the world, and we place them into compact electro-optical modules that are easy to use, easy to handle, and can be integrated into larger systems like a mobile phone or into a modem, for instance. This could be modules for automotive or aerospace applications that we see in the bottom left, optical transceivers, as we saw earlier, or else really customized modules. So in this case, it's something for an actual eye imaging system to actually image the back of your eye. One of the main challenges with using these photonic integrated circuits is actually how we get light in and out of them. So typically this is done by aligning an optical fiber to part of the chip that guides the light. And this is called the waveguide. Now the waveguide is extremely small. Typically it's less than 10 microns in diameter. This is about five times thinner than the thickness of a human hair, which is a diameter of about 16 microns. So we really need advanced processes and technologies to actually get the light in and out of these photonic integrated circuits. So in our group at Tyndall, we're actually working to develop simulations and processes to do this as efficiently and as quickly as possible. So we work on the mechanical, electrical, and optical design of these chips and really come up with new ways of getting light and electrical signals to and from. So here we can see some examples of some members of our group actually work on the mechanical design of one of these systems, with an example down below of how we get light in and out of a chip and how we back that up by really advanced optical simulations. In the future of packaging and light-based technologies will involve actually combining state-of-the-art electronic chips with state-of-the-art photonic chips in a single system. 
So in this case, then you're using the best of both worlds. This is very challenging, it requires extensive R&D, but the possibilities are huge for, for where these technologies will be used in the future. So here you can see an example of some of this photonic integration, where we're combining state-of-the-art electronics with a really state-of-the-art and advanced optics and photonic systems. And this is going to be used for an actual data communication system that we're currently working on at Tyndall. So to conclude my talk, I'd really like to highlight one area, or one interesting area, where we're combining photonics and electronics for a state-of-the-art medical diagnostic tool, which you can actually see here. The problem we're trying to solve with this tool is that cardiovascular disease is responsible for about 30% of the deaths worldwide. And there's really a really strong need to actually be able to diagnose the early stage markers for heart disease as quickly as possible, so we can give people the health they need before they actually have to go to the hospital for major surgery. Now, one of the most promising ways to actually detect the likelihood of you developing heart disease is by measuring something called the pressure flow of blood through an artery. And this is called the pulse wave velocity. The higher the speed or the higher the velocity, the stiffer the artery is, which implies that there's a higher risk of getting heart disease. Now, typically you measure the pulse wave velocity by actually taking a measurement between the femoral artery in your leg and the car carotid artery in your neck. This is a slow process, slightly invasive for the patient. And at Tyndall, we've been working on how photonic integration and lasers can actually be used to make a handheld module that can do, that can do this much faster and be non and more, and less invasive than traditional technologies. <clears throat> There's a project called CARDIS. We've actually worked with some of the world leaders in photonic integrated circuits. So they actually made a concept photonic integrated circuit that can actually measure a, pace, a patient's pulse wave velocity using six laser beams that can be incident on the carotid artery only. It does not actually have to make contact with the patient's skin at all. So this pick was made, and it was our job at Tyndall to actually integrate this into a handheld system that could be used in a clinical environment, environment by doctors. So at Tyndall, we took this pick that was made by our project partners and actually designed a full system around it. We saw the thermal, electrical, and mechanical challenges, and created a complete prototype design with the, with the photonic integrated circuit at its core, as you can see here. This design was then manufactured by engineers and scientists, and we created the first the world's first working prototype of the system. This prototype was extremely successful and underwent clinical trials in 2019 in two hospitals, so one in Paris and one in Holland. In this video, you can actually see a clip of where it was shown on French national television, one of their main science programs there. So here, one of the doctors that we worked with to develop the system is actually demonstrating the system on a colleague. So he brings the system towards the colleague's neck where it's focused on the carotid artery. And those red laser beams are aligned, he's at the correct distance away from the neck, and he pulls the trigger and takes an actual measurement where the pulse velocity is measured very, very quickly in a really non-invasive way. So we're now working on a new project where we're looking at large-scale manufacture of the system, where we hope that it can actually be used to save lives in the future. So thank you for joining this talk today. I'd like, really like to end by just sharing a quote from three Nobel Prize winners, Moreau, Helen, Hatch, who recently said that photonics is simply essential for powering the future European digital economy, which I think highlights how important photonics is seen to be for our future. So I hope that'll help you understand a little bit more about photonics, what it is, and how it's used, and how it will influence our lives in the future. So thank you.